final time we get to the other of the video games that I've reviewed, um, or rather I should say, i played and written prose reviews of, but I haven't really done a gameplay footage review of um, over the past little bit, which is Marvel's Spider-Man for the PlayStation 4. It's a game that I recall getting a lot of extremely positive reviews of when it came out, and it made it into contention for Game of the Year in a lot of places. On the other hand, even at the time, the depiction of Peter Parker's close relationship with the NYPD was considered problematic, and time has not been kind to that aspect of the story, so with the announcement of the game getting an HD remaster for the PlayStation 5 with an expanded com um, content with Miles Morales, let's go back to the original game and see how it holds up. The premise of Marvel's Spider-Man is, in short, that as, well, Spider-Man, having taken down Wilson Fisk, the kingpin of crime, you end up finding and fighting a new crime syndicate, the Demons, who are moving into the power vacuum. Through all of this, Peter also juggles helping out the homeless shelter Feast, where Aunt May is working, which is in turn run by local philanthropist Martin Lee. Oh, except it turns out that Martin Lee has a dark secret that connects to the Demons, one which will put all of New York at risk. Oh, and uh, Peter Parker's day job, working with one uh, Otto Octavius on prosthetic limbs with a neural interface. So there's that going on. Let's get to the good stuff first. The traversal in this game is amazing. This is the best swinging in a Spider-Man game since Spider-Man 2 for the PlayStation 2 and original Xbox. There is a sense of fluidity in the to the movement in the game, and is emphasized through how the layout of the city is set up, with a range of building heights and architecture throughout Manhattan, yes, just Manhattan, which helps give the player a general idea of where they are by the character of the buildings around them, um, of architecturally, density of the buildings, that sort, height of the buildings, that sort of thing. On top of layouts that change up how you need to navigate, complete with Central Park of the mid at the middle, with the option to go around or go straight through, depending on which direction you're going. Either way, working perfectly well. On top of that, the game adapts the combat formula of the Arkham games to here and works very well with a variety of different enemy types with different weapons and abilities, and thus requiring different tactics from the player in combat. All this throughout the game. There's also some pretty good stealth sequences in the game, some with intrepid reporter Mary Jane Watson and some with pre-spider bite Miles Morales, which are generally more conventional, and then on top of that, sequences with Spider-Man that fit more with the concept of the Predator sequences from the Arkham games. All of them are executed smoothly and work very well. The stealth sequences are nice because they are very good at providing very regular checkpoints, so if you screw up, you're not set that far back. And then... There's the story, which is very much a mixed bag. On the one hand, the characterization is tremendous. All of the characters are fleshed out tremendously well, with Doc Ock in particular having a wonderfully tra tragic arc, which basically takes what's been what's normally done with Kurt Connors or the Lizard and adapting it to Ock incredibly well, much more so than the Sam Raimi Spider-Man film did. In fact, it's like it's taking how the Sam Raimi did it and taking several more steps further, all which works splendidly. The way that Peter and Mary Jane's romance is done is also great, and this version of Aunt May is a nice amalgam of the 616 and ultimate versions of the character. Um, older, and certainly have a degree of, I don't want to say frailness, but there's, do they tell that she's, that, oh, she's, she's older, and Peter is worried about her, but on the other hand, she is still very much her own stand-up person, and is active and a go-getter and doing her own things as opposed to just hanging around the house as is common in the classic Silver Age and even some of the Iron of the Bronze Age versions of Aunt May. On the other hand, at the time that this game came out, it caught flack for Spider-Man working closely with the police to agree that not even Batman does, which even in 2018 felt questionable. In this moment in 2020, it is downright cringy. Part of me wants to say that they couldn't have foreseen this shift in the popular perception, except considering the disturbing regularity that black people are killed by police officers, considering the fact that I believe even at the point when this game came out, we had already had Colin Kaepernick 
NFL career getting cut short because he chose because he kneeled in protest during the national anthem, they should have thought through this. This is not to say that you can't have sympathetic characters in law enforcement in a work of fiction. One of the things I've appreciated from my Nightfall read-through on this same YouTube channel is how Commissioner Gordon, even in Gotham, is trying to turn the GCPD into the police department that people in the real world want to see, in spite of Mayor Kroll trying to get the police department to act like a bunch of jackbooted goons, and Harvey Bullock acting like a Popeye Doyle cosplayer. However, the Seer series recognizes that where it's at now is definitely not the ideal, and there's a way to go to get there that there is always room for improvement in Gotham. Now, all of this is somewhat aggravated by the third act of the main game. So, in the third act, the Sinister Six, not the traditional Sinister Six, because we have, instead of the Green Goblin, we have, um, well, we have Martin Lee as the demon, or Mr. Negative, rather, unleashing a pandemic on the city in form of a designer virus that was a side project of research done by Oscorp. In response to this, Mayor Norman Osborne, who has yet to become the Green Goblin, brings in a PMC run by Silver Sable to continue to police the city even more aggressively, and who has shoot on sight orders against Spider Man. Now, this could be a commentary on the growing militarization of police and the degradation of civil liberties that goes with it, but it's blunted by basically having the framework for this be oh, but it's not the actual cops, it's Mercs! And on top of this, we just have a slew of random ambient encounters with escaped prisoners from Rikers just taking pot shots at Spidey as well, which further blunts the point. I mean, yes, some of them were put in, may have been put into Rikers by Spider-Man, but still. And the other awkward part of this whole thing, as the entire act of the game being accompanied by a widespread disease epidemic sweeping through New York which also ties into another thing that's currently ongoing with the human malware, but honestly, I will cut Insomniac some slack because that one they couldn't have seen coming. Also, we get J. Jonah Jameson rants in the form of snippets of podcasts throughout the game, and while some of them include the level of engaging hyperbole you expect when it comes to Jameson griping about Spider-Man, threat or menace, there is also plenty of moments, including in the DLC, which has him just tap-dancing right up to the line of alt-right talking points, but not quite committing to go over. Now, they do acknowledge in the podcast that, yes, this is also a J. Jonah Jameson who is responsible in this universe, much as in the 616, for having created the Scorpion. It is still frustrating and obnoxious to hear, and it reached a point where I wanted to find a way to turn the podcast up, off, but there isn't. There's no actual way to turn the J. Jonah Jameson podcasts off if you don't want to listen to the ranting. So, as a whole, this is probably one of the best games out there when it comes to capturing the feeling of playing a particular superhero, of playing Spider-Man, even more so than the Arkham games and playing as Batman. It's just, expect to hit more than a few moments in the game which cause you to subconsciously, or even consciously, flinch. I'm looking forward to the PS5 remaster, and I'm especially looking forward to the Miles Morales um, additional expansion content standalone thing. I just don't know if I'll go all the way through the story mode again on the PS5 for the full game. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.